today I thought I might get started on, this is going to be, I think, a shelf. Make this out of an old fruit crate. Really old. That's kind of cool. Let's see. Get around so you can see it. So, yeah. I think I'm going to try to clean that up, mod podge it. Damage here, I'm gonna have to repair, I think. This damage here, I'm thinking I will leave because I think, because of how cool it is on the sides, I'm gonna make it into a shelf like this. And depending on how high I mount it, be able to either see the top or the bottom. See this on it. I actually think I might mount it high enough that I can see the. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that. See the bottom that way. So, all right. So I guess I'll get started. So I discovered while looking this over. And I can very, very carefully pull this off. The glue isn't really set anymore. And I should be able to, oh, without too many rips. label off. I can put it somewhere where it's going to display much more nicely. Okay, it's kind of thin here. Okay, so I discovered that I can possibly, if I can find the razor blade that You just had a razor blade in your hands, and now you don't. Oh, got a whole pack of them. All right, ouch. Uh, hold on. Okay, so found out tugging away at this a little bit. It's not super thin paper, and I might be able to very carefully remove this from the end. That's not going to work either. Yeah. Remove this from the end, and yeah, yeah, all of that. All right. So that one has some. Okay. So what I've decided to do is I got some of this stuff here. It's called, you know, what Mod Podge is, but this is a different formula, uh, water-based sealer, but uh, furniture gloss. So what I'm doing here is I clean it up a little bit with some uh, some water, just dab the dirt off, and now I'm kind of sticking this down around the edges first to get it to just kind of settle. I was debating whether or not to use the Mod Podge because it takes, I think I read close to a month, I'm going to have to double check that, but it takes a long time for this stuff to uh, really cure. So, Um, so I'm going to have to wait for a long time, but I got a craft area set up now in my office and that's going to go a long ways toward, ah, dang it, that's going to go a long ways toward letting me do stuff uh, this winter and stuff like this I can bring in once I'm done here and let dry. Um, as long as I keep the cat fur off of it, I should be good. 
that way. So I'm just kind of this stuff. It looks it doesn't look clear, but it does dry clear. So just being really careful here so I don't tear the paper. about Mod Podge is that it you gotta be careful because it's gonna soak the paper it's gonna want to make it ripple so you gotta real thin coats at first want a rag if you're working with this stuff. I have pants, so <laughs> I'll use my rag too, but I have a specific couple pairs of pants that I wear out here in the, in the garage. So, let's see how this turns out. hoping to be able to pull this off, but as you can see, I kind of, it's really, really glued down solid in places, and it's just not worth tearing it apart to pull it off. I'll just glue it down, and that'll be the top of the shelf, and that's fine. The thing about Mod Podge is even this furniture stuff, it's not completely... Oh, get under there. It's not completely waterproof. So the thing about that is that, so I'm gonna have to polyurethane around the sticker because I wanna use this thing. I'm gonna have to polyurethane around the sticker and then when, about when the Mod Podge is cured, I'm gonna have to go back and pull it off the wall because I, I, yeah, this is going to be a nice shelf for my tees. Since these crates can't take a huge amount of weight anymore, they're old and they're a little bit decrepit, um, but it'll handle a couple mugs and a couple of bags of tea, so, so once I get it though, it's going to have to, uh, come back out and get some polyurethane over the top of the Mod Podge. I just didn't trust that the polyurethane was going to stick this down well enough, so I wanted to go over it first with this stuff. Coats. And then I'll sand it a little bit more and seal it up. I'm gonna have to stick it inside because I am doing more sanding tonight yet. A lot more sanding. So make sure we got everything kind of just covered up and sealed up and there we go. 
stuck down. Okay, so that's that bit. So, now I have actually sanded a good portion of this because it's waiting for the glue to dry here. This seems to be a common problem with dealing with these fruit crates, is that these little wedges, I don't know if you can see it here, let's see if I can show you well, close, but you see the line here, there it is, you can see the line here, these wedges of wood on these fruit crates right on the bottom seem to want to uh, peel off. They're, I assume in their their use they had a lot of weight against these little tiny these little tiny pieces of wood. It's not very thick. So so I took out the nail. I, I'm gonna shine it up a little bit. Shining them all up just a little bit, and I'm just going to take a little hammer and tap this nail back in very carefully to where it goes. And there it is. So, take this off. so on this one here too. Tax. I'm assuming there was some kind of signage on those. Ooh, this one's. See that? It's coming loose too. So. I'm going to show you a trick here. Got this from Dasher Furniture Restoration, I believe they're called. And. He does take a little one of these. Uh, yeah, I just got a big pack of just randomly selected ones because I wasn't sure what I was going to need. But uh, pick a. I believe these were craft syringes, not medical syringes. Try. Well, there's plenty of glue. Hang on. Uh, okay. hmm. Probably shouldn't do this on the Glue All right, well, there's a tiny bit in there anyway. So you suck up a little bit of glue, and then you very carefully, so you don't split it even more, open up the split. Stick that glue syringe in there and just get that glue in that crack. And then you 
use this for a shelf, so it doesn't have to be so crazy well built put together that it needs to hold a lot of weight or anything. Um, it's going to be just a decorative shelf for my tea. So. There you've got the glue in there. See this on both sides. This kind of glue really flourishes when you've got both sides. Both sides of the split. So wipe that up. And this is I might just actually this is a not all the way through crack. And I want to flip it over on the other side and do that side too. Very gently. And it's a little bit squeezing out. And then my grandma called them cat tattletales. So you tell on you if the glue squeezes out. And... But there we go. Not super imperative with this because this kind of glue you can sand. So this side also. See this has a split right here, so we're gonna take care of that too. I'm gonna have to do this vertically because I've got the clamp on the other side, but should be able to here. You, there we go. So it looks like the best way to do it is to try to pull it back, the plunger, and then pull it out of the glue so it gets a little bit of air and sucks it up in there. Air bubbles aren't a problem in this case. So so yep, Dasher Furniture with Restoration is in... Well, according to their YouTube account, they're in Northeast. And he does a lot of great videos. I've learned a lot. And I will put a link in the description so you can avail yourself of his wisdom and So, clamp that up. Well, see this? I'm just going to glue that since I'm, I wouldn't bother, but since I'm, uh, Doing the rest of the several other pieces, I will do this too. I've got a little bit of time before this glue dries. Um, so. Just wipe these tails off real quick. Okay. Shoot 
this in here. like a lot of work to put into a fruit crate, but they really look neat once you're done with them. And if you like that rustic old farm house look, which I do, they do look pretty slick. There we go. Real gentle. Actually, I'm going to put this a little lower so I can get down. Some kettlebells. I'm going to go a little bit higher. Just a little. Get that one. Press two. It's just a matter of letting this dry. Finish up sanding. And polyurethane. I am putting this in a kitchen, so given the White kitchens seem to gather greasy dust. Uh, I don't really want to have just raw wood in there. And this is the rawest of raw wood. So it makes it hard to dust and clean. So we'll polyurethane the heck out of this thing. And that'll be next. All right. Okay. So you can see the glue is dry. You can barely see the line, which is pretty awesome. Right, right here. So I can take these off. And no, we're on the other side. So now I'm going to finish. What did I get on there? Mm. Well, it adds to the uh, adds to the mystery of the crate, mystery of its history. So, got a little bit here that I need to. This stuff just wants, really wants to come off. It's flaking off. You're gonna hear me making some noises because I screwed up my back for the thousandth time. And yes, it's frustrating and irritating and all of the other things. So, I can't get off with the uh, tool here, I will sand off, but I don't want to do too much sanding because I don't want it to take off the neat print. That's part of the charm of the old crates. I'm not exactly sure what that was. 
Maybe an old label. Okay, I'm done flaking at this thing. I'm just gonna take a sander. I'm using really high grit sandpaper. This is uh, 320, because I wanna just refresh the wood. I don't want to uh, take any of the character out of it, but I wanna refresh it and take down any splinters. We don't want to get, you know, slivers off of your uh, shelving. <laughs> the ball peen hammer to tap the nails back in if they get they're loose just kind of gives it a little bit of a inset um, you saw me going over the nails and you saw me going over the nails earlier you can take down a little bit of the rust off nails like that pretty, pretty quickly save you some time just use the sander see I'm missing a nail here Let's see what I got well, it's like the finest nail I have so I'm gonna try to tap that in as careful as possible It isn't going to match, but... Yep. That'll look just fine. 
So the next thing is to grab some tack cloth and oh, I missed a board. Like I say, I'm not going for like butter, just take all the splinters down, all the rough stuff off. So next I'll be hitting with the tack cloth and taking it outside. I'll show you what I'm using to put some sealer on it. Well, I'm out of tack cloth, so I'm just going to hit it with some water and a rag. Really, really barely damp rag. Here's that Mod Podge. It has been over a month now. I didn't mean for it to take more than a month before, <laughs> but it has now been more than a month. So this should be, the Mod Podge should be good and cured. I was just gonna leave that bit for last and hang this up on my as a shelf and uh, just hit it with the spray can. Later, but since it's done, I can do it all at once. The nice thing about these crates is that, yeah, you got to take down the splinters, but you don't have to sit there and sand and sand and sand so that it's like butter before you seal it, especially if I'm using a spray sealer. You don't get in all the nooks and crannies. So it's still rough, but not... Not in a bad way, in a rustic, aged way, which I kind of like. Now you see where I did sand and it did distress the lettering just a little bit because it was darker on the one side, but you know what? It doesn't matter, adds to the ambiance. So I was kind of sad that I wasn't going to be able to seal this. I got a little tent to spray paint things in the house, tried it, it sank right through the floor into the wife's bedroom and <laughs> nearly choked her out. So no spray painting in the house. So I thought maybe I wasn't going to be able to do this. But we got a nice warm week now after that crazy cold week. I'm just going to do this. Now it says in the instructions to spray it so it's good and wet with the sealer. But not so much that it's dripping. So pretty much like any other spray paint. bit of an overlap on each swipe and I'm trying to be very conscientious of getting in these corners because that's where dust likes to sit and that's going to be tough to clean off in the future putting it in the kitchen. Oh.
but this doesn't have to be water resistant or anything. I'm not using it like a, an end table or anything where there's a chance that something wet would be set on it. So it doesn't have to be too much. Ooh, that's spring and alpha. Grain, really nice. You can see that. Oh, nice, that grain is coming through. It might be cheap wood, but it's still wood, and it's beautiful. If I wanted to go a little bit more water resistant, I would have used the spar urethane instead of the just the satin urethane. Uh, but I've discovered that the spar urethane does like to yellow wood. And this wood is a little yellow already, it being a lighter, lighter pipe. So I didn't really want to do that. And again, since it doesn't have to be waterproof. Just overlap each swipe, it said, and... Did I do the side? No, I didn't do this. Try to keep track. That is one thing about working with these kind of projects is you've got to really remember okay did I sand that side too and the underside of that side and the top of that side and the back side of that side and it's not a crisis if you forget something because you can always go back but it does you know make you have to go back and take care of something that you thought you were done with drying, but how fast. The coat within 20 hours, or er, two hours, and then completely dry in 24. Now I'm going to hit the back of this, but I'm not going to hit it hard because that's going to be against the wall anyway. is really nice because I can get a decent coat on here without it dripping. It was kind of hard to get a thick coat, but at the same time, not so thick that it was going to drip on my other projects. But like any other spray paint, I had to wait till it came up to 70 degrees outside. Spray paint really doesn't like to adhere below 70 degrees, or so I read. I'm trying to avoid having that first-hand experience a bit. <laughs> so. Mm, this is why you wear gloves. You never know what angle you're going to be holding something at. Even the cheapest, crappiest gloves you can find. help a little bit. Okay. And it looks like I can hit it. a little more here. So, there we go. First coat. Get this really good. Save this sticker. 
I didn't save it as much as I wanted to, but it's still pretty neat. Nice splash of color. All right, let that dry. Second coat, and I'll show you what it looks like on the wall. Okay, so final product. Mounted it up here. Went vertical with it. So I can see the writing on the sides. That's gonna be all my T's. Uh, it's not a super duper uh, heavyweight thing, so I don't wanna <clears throat> overweight it. But plenty of tea. And you can see under here, I did stabilize the sticker, so when I take it down off the wall at some point, I will be able to show off the sticker somewhere else. But there it is. All that work, but a pretty cool shelf for my coffee and tea station. All right, well, thanks for watching, and have a good one. Bye-bye.